Right, good afternoon everyone. This is the last section of the production function and it looks at production costs. So in order to make maximum profit, a business needs to keep in mind all the costs that affect the profit of the business. The production department should aim at decreasing these production costs by increasing the productivity through effective use of resources. All costs at the different stages of the production process must be considered when calculating these costs. Right, so we're going to categorize these costs. And the first ones we're going to look at is what we call overhead costs, right? The first one is the variable overhead. The word variable means it varies, it changes the whole time. So variable costs change according to the number of product units that are being produced. The more products produced, the higher the total variable cost. So a simple example, if I make one hot dog, it's going to cost me one bread roll and one Vienna sausage, plus a little bit of water and electricity. But if I make a hundred hot dogs, I'm going to have to pay for a hundred bread rolls and a hundred Vienna sausages. So it varies, it changes depending on how many units are produced. If we look at fixed overheads, this stays the same. So fixed costs are the costs that stay the same regardless of how many products are being produced. These costs have to be paid even if no products are being produced or sold. So examples here include rent, insurance, salaries, and it's very important that you understand the difference between these two overhead costs. I always like looking at pictures to help me understand things better. So remember the variable overheads, these change according to the number of units made and sold. Okay, so you can see it increases as you sell more and more. Whereas the fixed overhead cost, the cost stays the same the whole time, regardless of how many are made. Right, so what is a total cost? A total cost will include your fixed cost, the one that stayed the same, plus you're going to add the variable cost, the VC. Remember, this is the one that changed as you made more and more. So I want you to imagine that you're picking up this green triangle. So pick it up in your mind's eye and place it on top of the fixed cost, and then you're going to get what we call the total cost. So the total cost is your fixed cost plus your variable cost. So I may ask you what is a unit cost, right? This is how much it costs for one item being produced. So you take the total cost, that's your variable cost, plus the fixed cost, and you divide it by the number of units produced. So please look very carefully at questions if they're asking for a unit cost, or if they just want to know what it costs for everything to be made. We then move on to the selling price. Now remember, the primary objective of any business is to make a profit, to maximize their profits. So your selling price always has to be bigger than your cost price. And in our marketing function, we looked at different techniques or methods of determining what your selling price should be. Most often we use a cost plus profit method, which looks at what is your total cost, plus how much markup percentage do you want to add to that. So now that we've looked at costs, we've looked at selling price, it's important that we remember what a profit is. So profit is all your income minus all your expenses. We're now going to look at some calculations. We get what we call a total cost of production, right? The first thing we've got to know is that there are primary costs. These primary costs are to do with direct material, the actual raw materials that are used in the production of, let's say, a sheet, right? You need cotton, you need fabric, those would be direct materials. Direct labor is that staff that is really actively working on making up that linen and those sheets. It's not the person or the accountant or the receptionist, right? It's the people who are directly involved in making that particular product. So if we look at this example here, We've got direct material of 50,000 Rand and the direct labor is 25,000 Rand. So in total, our combined primary cost is 75,000 Rand. Then you would have other overheads, other expenses. 
these would be the fixed overhead so for example the rent the water the electricity those kind of things might be fixed your variable overhead remember changes you might use more water during this production stage so that would change every time so your overheads here add up to 10,000 Rand so in total your total cost of production is 85,000 Rand the next calculation we look at is what we call the break-even point so this is the point in the volume of production where neither a profit nor a loss has been made so you've broken even this means that income generated from sales is equal to the total production cost as soon as the business now starts making more a profit will be generated so this should look quite familiar to you because you would have done it in EMS right so remember there's my fixed cost it stays the same here is my total cost I've put my my variable cost on top of there and here are my sales this purple line so the moment where my sales crosses my total cost that is my break-even point so at 5,000 units I haven't made a profit and neither have I made a loss the moment I make 7,500 units I've started making a profit so this whole area here is a profit if I only manufacture 2,500 have a look here my sales is way below my total costs all right so in this area here I am making a loss so the break-even point no profit or no loss has been made and let's be honest no one wants to stay in business just to break even you really want to get to that point of profitability so now we're going to look at how do you go about calculating this break-even point okay so the first step in calculating the break-even point is we want to figure out what this contribution margin is so in other words how much money am I making on one product okay so to figure out this contribution margin I've got to take my selling price minus what it costs me to make one unit step two then is calculating this break-even point so let's move on to the next slide so here we can see my break-even point equals my fixed cost right that's my rent that's going to say the same insurance salaries divided it by my contribution margin right so I'm going to use a very basic example here at the bottom you can see I've got rent of 10,000 Rand salaries of 20,000 Rand my selling price for one unit is 10 Rand and the variable cost to make that unit is 5 Rand so my fixed cost is my 10,000 plus my 20,000 which gives me 30,000 divided by my contribution margin so in other words how much money am I making on every single product that I sell so it's 10 Rand is my selling price minus my variable cost is 5 Rand so in other words what is 30,000 Rand divided by 5 Rand the answer is 6,000 so I have to make and sell 6,000 units before I can start making a profit so only when I make and sell 6,001 have I started making a profit of 5 Rand so I really hope that that has helped and that it makes it a lot clearer just remember the primary objective of any business is to make a profit so you must make sure that all your costings are correct have a great day